您好，我是光启社的社长马少阿弟，欢迎您收看这一周的罗马主场 Run Report。在新闻首先，我们来看教宗方济各主持首次的圣言主日弥撒。在弥撒当中，最重要的礼仪标记就是一开始隆重展示的读经集。这是凡尔大公会议整个会期当中所使用的读经集。教宗在讲道中阐述耶稣的宣讲方式，展现出天主圣言，也就是基督与人相遇的地方，并非是人感到安稳之处，而是布满猜疑、困惑之地。但是天主圣言也为人找到了出路。On the first Sunday dedicated to the Word of God, Pope Francis celebrated Mass in the Vatican with very significant gestures. For instance, the same lectern used during the Second Vatican Council was used. Following the readings, the Gospel book was enthroned before the altar. In his homily, the Pope reflected on Jesus' way of teaching. He said the long-awaited Messiah began his teaching far from Jerusalem. Thus, he showed that Jesus, the Word of God, doesn't meet people where they feel confident. But rather, where there is doubt and confusion, to offer a way out. La parola che salva non va in cerca di luoghi preservati, sterilizzati, sicuri. Viene alle nostre complessità, nelle nostre oscurità. Oggi come allora, Dio desidera visitare quei luoghi dove pensiamo che egli non arrivi. The Pope also said the help Jesus offers can be rejected out of the fear of facing oneself in the dark places of one's personal life. Quante volte siamo invece a noi a chiudere la porta, preferendo tenere nascoste le nostre confusioni, le nostre opacità e doppiezze. Le sigilliamo dentro di noi, mentre andiamo dal Signore con qualche preghiera formale, stando attenti. Che la sua verità non ci scuota dentro. E questa è una una ipocrisia nascosta.、Eh? After the celebration, the Pope personally gave Bibles to 60 people from different walks of life. Among them were Italian scientist Antonino Zicchi and Rome's midfielder Nicolò Zaniolo, a promising player in Italian soccer. 全球面临人口老化的困境，教宗方济各最近接见年岁的富饶研讨会的与会者们。他提醒众人，年岁的富饶是人生旅途的珍宝。当许多国家面临人口老化，这也让我们能够反思，必须要学习、掌握以及欣赏老年的价值。The Pope met with participants of the conference, the richness of many years of life, which analyzes the challenges of old age and the pastoral care of the elderly. Pope Francis reminded them that the richness of old age is a precious treasure that takes shape in the journey of every man and woman's life. He said the aging of society in many countries should be a call to serious reflection in order to learn to grasp and appreciate the value of the elderly. Mentre da un lato gli stati devono affrontare la nuova situazione demografica. Sul piano economico, dall'altro la società civile ha bisogno di valori e significati per la terza e la quarta età. The Pope reminded participants that life is a gift, and when it is long, it is a privilege for oneself and for others. Oggi vorrei dirvi che anche gli anziani sono il presente e il domani della Chiesa. Sì, sono anche il futuro di una Chiesa. Che insieme ai giovani profetizza e sogna. That's why he asked them not to let themselves be discouraged by the challenges of old age. He also emphasized the importance of dialogue between the elderly and the youth. Chiesa. 罗马市中心的堂区最近二十四小时开放收容无家者，而现在备有三十个简单的床位，不让无家者在严寒中露宿。这个善功由西班牙志愿团体和平使者倡导，而著名的西班牙歌手拉斐尔，他卖出超过五千万张的唱片，他也来到了罗马，为这项活动的开幕仪式进行义演。
This parish in the heart of Rome is open 24 hours a day for the people who need it most, the homeless. Now we'll also have these new simple beds so 90 people do not have to sleep outside during the cold winter nights. This initiative was launched by the Spanish NGO, Messengers of Peace. Thanks to this, we see how society is not sick. On the contrary, it is healthy, helpful, and rich in values. Call it what you want, but people will always be supportive. Ask, open your arms, and receive. This place is an example of that. The famous Spanish singer Rafael, who sold more than 50 million records throughout his successful career, traveled to Rome to sponsor both the opening of the room and this humanitarian organization. This is good charity and hopefully it will be very successful and multiply, like bread and fish. The important thing is the people themselves support these projects, be they famous or not. It does not matter. Before God and all important things, it doesn't matter if a person is famous or not. A few hours earlier, both Father Angel and Rafael attended Mass at Casa Santa Marta with the Pope. They explained this project to the Pope and gave him a very special gift. We met in Buenos Aires a while ago, but this time, knowing that he is very fond of tango, I brought him my personal tango album. It was a beautiful moment. The Pope wrote us a beautiful letter when he opened this church to the homeless. He told us he was glad there were churches open 24 hours because some look more like museums they have been closed for so long. In the Eternal City, this church is the opposite. It represents what Pope Francis has so often asked, for churches to be a field hospital for those who suffer the wounds of this world, both in their soul and on their body. This Twenty-five leaders from the Abrahamic monotheistic religions met in Rome for two days for the Abrahamic Faiths Initiative. The event was inspired by the Document on Human Fraternity, signed by Pope Francis and the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar in 2019, in an effort for peace and reconciliation. We are here today to build on that momentum, to build on that message, and to take it to the next level, to the grassroots levels, to places where there's conflict, there's tension, so that we can change the mind and the hearts of people and have them to believe in the core values of every religion, which is about peace and love and respect. In 48 hours, the religious leaders focused on countries most in danger, discussing how to encourage dialogue and unite religions, especially where it's never been done before. In Uzbekistan, in, in Tajikistan, in Kazakhstan, um, where we can help model what that would be like and train people how to do um, these dialogues. There are places like Sudan that's emerging out of a very repressive age, looking for new ways to offer religious freedom, um, and which with tensions between Muslims and Christians. Um, and this is a very small Jewish community there. Was, um, uh, and finding ways for them to work together as they build a new Sudan um, can be vital. Important. We have just recently moved 160 women from South Sudan into Uganda for a week for a meeting. These women were from warring tribes. They had not met for 10 years. They were not speaking to each other. And we decided we needed to make an intervention. Brought these women to live together and work together for a week. At the end of it, they had laid down their burdens. They had forgiven each other. The opportunities for women, youth, and families to get involved in the peace process are essential to its success. Yet these aren't the first efforts of its kind. Previous documents like the Marrakesh Declaration within the Muslim world and the Alliance Virtue Charter have supported the same peace efforts. There have been efforts across the globe. What we're trying to do is to say we have the powerful textual basis provided by the human fraternity document and other documents. It's time for us to think much more strategically and tactically about implementing those values. 
In 45 days, they say they will announce a larger effort and the fruit from this two-day meeting in the Eternal City. It's sure to be a way everyone can actively seek peace, no matter which country they're in. 教宗方济各最近与圣座教义部的成员会面，在过去几天，他们都在举行圣部全体大会，讨论医治严重的病患或绝症病人的神学基础。而教宗方济各再一次的强调，他反对因效益及功用去衡量个人价值，因为这样就忽略了人的生命是无价的。The Pope met with the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. They have been meeting the past few days for their plenary assembly to discuss the theological basis of treating patients with severe or terminal illnesses. The Pope spoke against valuing a person based on his or her efficiency or utility. He said this is losing sight of the infinite value of every person in any condition. In questa situazione di perdita degli autentici valori. Vengono meno anche i doveri inderogabili della solidarietà e della fraternità umana e cristiana. The Pope said one of the Church's tasks is to teach people to care for those who suffer. In this case, the terminally ill. L'approccio relazionale e non meramente clinico con il malato, considerato nella unicità e integralità della sua persona, impone il dovere di non abbandonare mai nessuno. In presenza dei mali inguaribili. In his address, the Pope said the congregation is currently updating norms regarding crimes of abuse so that procedures can be more effective. The same department is responsible for judging the priests guilty of these terrible crimes. 圣公会大主教伊恩·欧奈斯特最近对外表示，他作为代理联络人的坎特伯雷大主教维尔比与教宗方济各即将在2020年的3月共同访问南苏丹，而先决条件是苏丹方面的交战双方可以合作，在募访前成立临时政府。伊恩大主教说：“此行乃二零一九年南苏丹两位领袖在梵蒂冈参加退行的后续活动。当时教宗方济各也亲吻他们的脚，促请他们实现和平。” Anglican Archbishop Ian Ernest is the acting liaison between Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby and Pope Francis. He confirmed that the two leaders will visit South Sudan in March 2020, on the condition that the provisional government uniting the two warring sides in the country is set up before then. According to Archbishop Ian, the trip would be a follow-up to the retreat held for the two political leaders in the Vatican in April 2019, when Pope Francis kissed their feet and asked them to make peace. The two church leaders are expected now to give a. Quick momentum for peace that can prevail in this part of the world. Pope Francis has been very insistent about his desire to visit South Sudan, originally mentioning it in 2017. He said he would not go without Archbishop Justin Welby. Perché sono venuti i vescovi, l'anglicano, il presbiteriano e il cattolico, tre insieme a dirmi. Per favore, venga in Sud Sudan, soltanto una giornata, ma non venga solo. Venga con Justin Welby, cioè con il vescovo di Canterbury. As approximately 60% of the South Sudan population is Christian, split almost evenly between Catholics and other Christian denominations, the presence of both Anglican and Roman Catholic leadership could provide the push necessary to achieve lasting peace in the country. Archbishop Ian was Anglican Bishop of Mauritius for 18 years. He is happy with his new role and ready to face the challenges that come with it. He says this past month, new initiatives have been launched to further the center's mission of unity. It's a calling from God. I never expected to occupy one day such a position. So the challenge is to be able to honor the expectations and the trust placed in me. And already, for the past month. Initiatives have been launched, conversations、uh, have been present, and I can see that、uh, the the future for the centre will be one of of continuity, but also of 
innovative initiatives for the sake of God's kingdom and for the unity of the Church. He is also hopeful that, in collaboration with the Pope, he will be able to fulfill his important task of fostering strong Anglican-Roman Catholic relations. Meeting the Pope is always something that uh, gives us a feeling that we've known each other for a long time. Uh, the tenderness of the welcome, the shaking of hands were so firm that you could feel that there was that uh, ability to walk together, to work together. In a way, Archbishop Ian has known Pope Francis for a long time. He has encountered him on other occasions, including the Pope's visit to Mauritius in 2019 and the 50th anniversary celebration of the Anglican Center in Rome in 2016. 梵蒂冈圣伯多路大殿每年有两大庆典都在黑暗中进堂St. Peter's Basilica goes completely dark on two occasions each year. One is the Easter Vigil, the other is this feast, the Day for Consecrated Life, which the Church celebrates together with the presentation of Jesus in the Temple and the purification of Mary. The suggestive procession began in the atrium of the Basilica. The choir sang the words of God's praise spoken by Simeon upon seeing the infant Jesus, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. It's a way to symbolize that religious men and women are a light for the world. The Pope was very direct in his homily. He said in religious life, personal achievements don't matter, and neither does a lack of them, which he said can lead to discouragement. He says what counts is the amount of space allowed for God in one's soul. Il tentatore, il diavolo, insiste proprio sulle nostre miserie, sulle ma le nostre mani vuote. In tanti anni, Noi sei migliorato, non hai realizzato quel che potevi, non ti hanno lasciato fare quello per cui eri portato, non sei stato sempre fedele, non sei capace e così via. No? E rischiamo di perdere la bussola, che è la gratuità di Dio. Pope Francis said what counts in religious life is a personal relationship with God's love. It is a relationship which requires one's own weaknesses in order to accept forgiveness and feel loved. Credo che era Girolamo che dava tante cose al Signore. Il Signore chiedeva di più. Lui gli ha detto "Ma Signore, ti ho dato tutto. Tutto. Cosa manca? I tuoi peccati, le tue miserie, dammi le tue miserie." Quando teniamo lo sguardo fisso in Lui, ci apriamo al perdono che ci rinnova e veniamo confermati dalla Sua fedeltà. Oggi possiamo chiederci, io, a chi oriento lo sguardo? Al Signore o a me? At the celebration were many different religious congregations. A Dominican and a Franciscan were in charge of the readings. A Benedictine and a Carmelite, among others, could be seen during the offertory. Pope Francis wore Paul VI's vestments. Among those present were the prefect and the secretary of the Congregation for Religious Life, Brazilian Joao Braz de Aviz, and Spaniard José Rodríguez Carballo. <laughs> 继续来看教宗讲授要理,他来到宝路六世大厅,跟众多朝圣者热切地问好。教宗继续讲解征服八端的第一端,神平的人是有福的。教宗解释, 福音所讲的贫穷不仅是物质贫穷,而是指接纳自己的个人限制。教宗说,我们要在人际关系中活出贫穷。Pope Francis exchanged dozens of affectionate greetings with pilgrims gathered in Paul VI Hall. He even made one of them Pope. During his catechesis, he explained the first beatitude, which praises the poor in spirit. 
The Pope explained that the poverty of which the Gospel speaks is not merely a question of material wealth. Rather, he said it refers to the acceptance of one's personal limitations. Quante volte ci è stato detto il contrario? Bisogna essere qualcosa nella vita, essere qualcuno. Se io devo essere qualcuno, sono in competizione con gli altri e vivo nella preoccupazione ossessiva per il mio ego. Se non accetto di essere povero, prendo in odio tutto ciò che mi ricorda la mia fragilità. The Pope said poverty is lived out especially in personal relationships. He said this becomes particularly apparent in marriage, as couples often clash with their own and each other's limits. Asking forgiveness and forgiving may be difficult in some cases, but necessary nonetheless. Ser pobres nos libera del orgullo, del exigirnos ser autosuficientes, y nos da derecho a pedir ayuda, a pedir perdón. Tan difícil pedir perdón. The Pope then recommended making the effort to free oneself from one's ego in order to be capable of loving, forgiving, and living more fully. 今年的五月标志着教宗方济各颁布愿你受赞颂通谕届满五周年May 2020 will mark five years since the publication of Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si. After all this time, its proposals continue to inspire ambitious initiatives. One of them is the so-called Assisi Manifesto. It seeks to transform the environmental crisis into an opportunity to build an economy and a society on a human scale and to renew the European Union's mission. Various Italian organizations have launched it. It's been supported by the Italian Prime Minister and the President of the European Parliament. Italy can be a leader for progress in this area on the political, economic and social levels. If efforts in this direction aren't global, if we don't manage to convince not just Italy and Europe, but other continents, we will never overcome this challenge. In this moment, we're all asked not only to choose this path, but to come up with ways to pave it. We want to pave it by putting the planet and the human being at the center of the solution. This is the right direction. The so-called Assisi Manifesto has already been signed by more than 2,000 institutions and leaders of Italian society. One of its primary promoters is Francesco Starace, CEO of Enel. This multinational energy company is one of the biggest 100 in the world. Francesco Starace said his company for many years has bet on a circular and ecological economy based on renewable energy sources. When we look at what we've accomplished during these five years, doubling the company's value and expanding it to a currently unmatched global dimension, we see that entering into this new type of economy with courage, determination and initially a little craziness is really very logical and rational. That's why I invite everyone to follow suit. The manifesto was presented at the sacred convent of St. Francis in Assisi. The ambitious project brings together the political, business, cultural and technological fields. It's a lot more than eliminating harmful gas emissions by 2050. As the great artists of Italian culture did, the project aims to show humanity's greatness. 在新闻最后带您来看曾经担任教廷瑞士卫队和教廷厨师的大卫盖瑟为 writing his first cookbook at 18 years old, David Geiser would never would have imagined where his creativity and faith would take him. He seemingly became famous overnight, before he became a Swiss guard and a chef for Pope Francis. 
I think it means to be a Catholic chef that we have a responsibility for, for the world and that we stay in the life and that we show our way and how we do our um, life and that we, that, yes, that we don't afraid to show that. Part of that testimony is his own personal mission to eliminate food waste. In his kitchen, he says nothing is ever thrown out but reused in various dishes. I think it's very important because here in Europe or in Switzerland we have enough food. We can go to the supermarket, can um, buy what we like and in other countries they don't have this possibility. And I think um, with the food in Europe we could feed the whole world and for this I think um, we have really to look that we don't um, give this food away. Instead of throwing the food away, his goal is to give it away to all those who are most in need. In Europe alone, 88 million tons of food are wasted every year, 53% coming from households. He asserts if everyone does their part, waste will diminish and even more delicious food can be created for everyone. 感谢您收看这一周的罗马主场Rome Reports，我是光启社的社长马绍阿弟。我们下一周再会，祝福大家平安喜乐。本节目由光启社媒体服传，以爱还爱，影音工程计划赞助。二零二零年，耶稣会士南怀仁传需要您捐款赞助，详情